So parents, we live in a entertainment driven society, right? Social media, reality TV, all of these things are influencing our kids, how they think, how they behave, um, how they feel about themselves. And so I want to take a moment to talk to you a little bit about social media, because the reality of it is, it's a totally different experience than some of us might have had growing up. Um, whereas when we grew up, if someone didn't like you, or if there was a fight, or you get into an argument with someone at your school, maybe, maybe the whole school will know by the end of the week. But not today. With the click of a button, kids are, you know, within a 10, 100 mile radius in different states know what's happened. And so now the whole, you know, don't worry about it. Things will get better. Who cares if they don't like you that we might have been told growing up? Doesn't necessarily work for some of our children and teens today, especially when we have, it's getting younger and younger in terms of people getting social media pages, right? We have Instagram, Twitter. Four squares, there's Ask FM, there's so many out there. And a lot of parents are feeling a little bit overwhelmed and helpless. Like, what do I tell my child? Do I just let them have the social media and hope for the best? Or do I totally take it away? Because that doesn't necessarily work. They just open accounts on their friend's phone. So what do you do as parents? What can you do when social media seems so huge and it's just yourself in your house? And so today I'm going to provide you with a couple of tips that may be helpful in managing that with your children. So first I would say be aware of what your kids are watching and what social media platforms they're on. Um, have conversations with them. Ask them how many social media pages they have. You'll be surprised that most teens I deal with have at least six. I have trouble with one email page. <laughs> I can only imagine if you have six different social media pages from six different websites with six different feeds coming in of people telling you things. Um, so be mindful of the social media, how many they're on. If you're a parent who's open to your child having social media, you may want to put maybe constraints on how many social media sites they have. Maybe they just allow Facebook and Instagram or two or three at the most. So being mindful of that. Um, also just having general conversations with your children about social media will let you know where their thought process is. So as opposed to coming from a defense, you better not be posting this, you better not be posting that, or you know, you better not care about likes and things like that because the reality of it is, is they do. Having conversations with them, talking to them about, well, how do you feel when so many people don't like your page? And so what do you do when you only get this many likes? And what does that mean? Coming from a curious standpoint versus a defensive one. Um, we'll give you more information, it'll get your child talking, it'll give you more information about their thoughts, and you really get to see their viewpoints. And if you're worried about some of the more severe, such as sexting, that truly happens in young as middle school, um, ask a question, ask your child. You know, I've heard of some of these girls sending pictures, or some of these guys sending pictures, and it seems that it's really upsetting. What do you think about that? Just an open-ended question to give you your child's thoughts, and you get to kind of see what reference point they're coming from. If they say, oh, I think that's the most ridiculous thing ever, okay, well, why do you think some people send those pictures? Or why do you think people get so sad um, from social media likes? Just facilitating open dialogue will give you so much insight into what's going on in your child's world. Also, being aware of what your children are posting. Um, if you, you should follow their pages if you're able to. Be mindful. Um, a lot of times if they're posting a lot of depressing quotes, a lot of dark things, that may be a, a, a red flag for you to ask more questions. Um, pay attention to the friends that they keep on their page, you know. Um, when you kind of surf through their friends' pages, you know, are these positive friends? Or are these friends that are engaging in situations and activities that you didn't really want your child being a part of? You know, what, what groups do they follow? Are they following positive groups? Or are they following groups that don't add up with the moral and value systems that you're trying to teach your child? So being aware. Lastly, be aware of your child's behavior. Now, teenage years are extremely difficult years. Being a child is hard, especially in this society with so many different information coming from so many different aspects. So just be aware of your child's behavior. You know, if their grades are starting to fall, they seem sad and isolating all the time, and your child used to be a happy child, or you notice that they're making really, really negative thoughts about themselves, if there's a drastic change in the friends that they have, or the people they choose to hang around, um, if you're noticing that they're sleeping more, or they're not sleeping enough. Um, do they have their phone with them every second of the day and when you take it away, it's like you're taking their life support. Um, be mindful of that because 
those may be cues that something else may be going, something else may be going on with your child. Okay, so open dialogue, monitor your child's behavior, and don't be afraid to ask questions. If you come from a curious standpoint, it increases the chance that your child may actually be open to talking to you about some of those things.